So we'll just keep our other foot cold, um, warm because it's one of those cold Hawaiian winter days. <laughs> Must be down at 23 degrees Celsius. <laughs> um, so I'm going to continue doing what I was doing. As I say, sometimes it could take me two or three hours to properly loosen up and restructure a big toe. This is the kind of um, thing that people don't understand. Like, because a normal massage, they would just kind of, they wouldn't even pay any attention to a big toe whatsoever if they even touch it, you know? So that's why people got to get these ideas out of their head about, you know, normal massage or whatever it is, you know? Because the, the, the goal of a good therapeutic style massage, and we got to distinguish between therapeutic massage and sensual massage. Sensual massage is supposed to feel good. It's supposed to feel so nice, right? It has nothing to do with therapy. And that's why you can do it in an hour. It's just, oh, that felt so nice for an hour. I fell asleep or, you know, sensual massage has its connection with prostitution and with all sorts of things, you know, because um, the goal is sensual. The goal is to feel nice. Therapeutic massage has a goal of making people better. And how do we do that? The prime element of therapeutic massage, good therapeutic massage is fine to get rid of residual tension, okay? So that's what can take time. And, and, and massage in most Asian cultures traditionally was therapeutic in nature. There has been a tendency in some places like in Thailand or stuff to, you know, obviously do sensual massage for tourists and things. But if you go to a, like a temple massage like Wat Po in Thailand, it's all therapeutic. And they often think, oh, Westerners don't have any real ability to handle pain because they think Westerners have this idea that massage is supposed to feel good. Because, and that's why they have this concept that massage isn't a health thing, it's a luxury, it's a pampering, you know? Because you don't go in for brain surgery and think, well, this was supposed to feel good. You don't even go to a dentist and think this is supposed to feel good. You know they're going to give you an injection because it hurts so much. But this is, so, anyway, Rainer massage is the therapeutic form of massage, not essential. Uh, very effective. So now I'm coming back into this band and I'm moving the toe at the same time. So I'm working, I'm crossing over that band. And then again, and it's, it, it's definitely loosening up compared to how tight it was when I first started working on it. It's loosening up right even in here, right up against the, where the toe joins the foot. But, but not completely. I've got it down maybe, you know, from an eight to a nine to a six or something, but I still want to get more out of there. So now what I'm doing is I'm stretching the toe that way, and then I'm gonna work in and I'm gonna focus is right in there. Again, the, the importance here is not about going through motions, it's about feeling whether what you're doing is loosening something up or not. And slowly but surely it is. And so it's very interesting because some people have asked me, oh, is this better to be done with anesthetic? But I actually find that um, it's a fascinating thing the way the life force works. It's better off that you're doing it just at a person's pain threshold because this will access also, as well as the blocked, what we call energy in the body, it'll access the emotions, okay? 
So whereas with an anesthetic it might not do that and it would be a, a strange sort of thing. So I, uh, I'm not too into that idea. So again, just letting her breathe into it, letting her feel that life force moving into her toe in a better way. And you can see there some emotions starting to move. And a lot of it is actually held just in this spot here. Okay, so we just again let her cry into it, let her breathe into it, scream into it, whatever's if an effective way to release that trapped, what we call bad energy that's that's being in there or bad emotion. So let her go. And watching that breath, we want to again make sure that she's doing that deep breath into her belly. Sometimes when people have an emotional release, they can get a bit trapped up in their head or they can feel sorry for themselves. It's not really, that's not going to be effective. What we want is always the deep belly breathing into what we call the Dantian. Very good because otherwise it'll just get trapped in the head. We don't want that. We want her to feel it and let it go. So while she's processing that, we don't stir up anymore. We don't want to create, um, you know, it's like a river flowing. We don't want to create a, a, a torrent where it's going to flood or become overwhelming for the person. They've got to process a bit. So again, that, what I was talking about there, the regulating factor bringing the breath. Regulating factor is not actually how fast can I work, how effective can I work, how deep can I work. It's how much can she breathe into. That's what, as you become a better practitioner, that's going to be. If, if you're not very skilled, it might be the fact that you're not able to work effectively that's regulating the effectiveness of the treatment. But it's a partnership model of medicine. Her role in it is to breathe and to cry and to scream and let out anything and just keep that body re relaxing, moving that. Whatever I'm stirring up that's caused this tension, that's causing this toe to be pulled, whether we call that an energy, whether we call that emotion, whatever it is, some sort of mm, between a subtle and a gross energy, because it's obviously creating a gross level of tension, but it's a subtle thing as well um, that's blocked, and it will be shifted by the breath, and it will be shifted if it is emotional by letting the emotion out. Okay, and you can see she's got the you know the flicking of the hands and that sort of thing, because the energy pools up in the head, pools in the hands until it comes out through the breath. So we just let her breathe into that. Again, if it gets a bit too much for, we could always come do assisted belly breathing, but her breathing is good. Or we could do a head massage with a towel. As I say, using the towel will help us not to pick up that energy. But she's doing very well. She's really working with me and just breathing into that and feeling what it is. So it's very, very good. Yeah, but it's like a process. And a lot has been released on the side of this toe. So, one of, and this probably being one of her tightest spots in her body or one of her major imbalances there in her tight, certainly in her legs, we haven't felt that But certainly in her legs, this was one of the tightest areas that's causing the biggest Imbalance, so we can expect that there can be some energy moving. We can expect their emotion to be associated with it uh, because we could also expect that this has um, probably been there for quite a while, a certain, certain while anyway, certainly not from yesterday or anything. It's a, it's a long-term thing that's been developing. And as I say, much better to treat somebody at <coughs> under 50 in particular um, rather than wait till people get into their 80s, this would be even too much for many people in their 80s. And the, the, the feet would just become completely gnarly while leaving tension.
So it's actually more danger, dangerous to leave tension. It might look dramatic, oh yeah, the person's crying or the, there's energy moving. Um, you know, it all looks dramatic, but the most important thing is that it's much better to get the tension out of the body than it is to hold it. It's very dangerous. It'll definitely reduce your life expectancy and the quality of your life to keep tension in your body. So a little bit of drama uh, keeps you awake. You don't need to, um, you know, get all fussed about it after a while. It's just, yeah, okay, people having a release. Um, I wouldn't get too caught up in it all. Uh, as long as they're able to deep breathe, that's the main thing. And you can see she is deep breathing. When somebody's deep breathing, it will shift. If somebody gets panicky where they start to shallow breathe and feel sorry for themselves, we first of all do assisted belly breathing to encourage them to get back into the deep breathing. We could do a head massage because it could just be too much energy is trapped in the head and we can take some of that out by a head massage through a towel. And lastly, we could always do really a, a deep foot massage in this area of the foot to bring their energy back down um, into their body and out of their head. But it's not actually getting trapped in her head because she is still um, deep belly breathing and it's it's all just moving. So um, again, the longer it is that somebody's had a treatment or more treatments, many people need 10 to 40 hours as I say. Some people need way more than that. Um, then the more dramatic it's likely to be as tension's built up. So we just watch it, let it go. Like I said, as long as it's coming out, it's better out than in. Um, and then when she's ready for more, you know, so then we can proceed with more. How are you feeling there, Rasiki? You ready for more? A few more breaths? Yeah. So we could come in and just do that assisted belly breathing. Big breath. And we can even feel exactly where this band is coming and it's a lot looser than what it was because you can still feel the difference between this side here that hasn't been worked and this side that's actually starting to let go. Quite interesting. See how it's, it's, it feels softer and I'm sure Rosika can feel the difference already. All right. Whereas this one's like shh, tight still. And again. There is a fair bit of, you know, a fair bit of buildup, even in this big toe belly band on this side, it's quite tight. Um, but all of that, once we reduce the other side of the toe, will also start to let go. So there's plenty of stuff that she's holding on to. Thank you for saving up all this um, tension for this video. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go to the bathroom.